Hi everyone, thanks for coming back for part two. This is actually the scripture that I was looking for when I was looking for the word power. Over here it says, And he deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which he which had the wound by a sword and did live and so over here it doesn't actually say power it says and all the residents of the earth by the signs that were given to him to do before the beast saying to the residents or those who dwell upon the earth to make this word is the word bisa which means let me just take a look at it to make to produce, to put forth. Okay, so he's telling the people to make, or the inhabitants of the earth, to make an image to the beast, an icon to the beast that had the wound of the sword and did live. And so this is really important how he incurred this wound it, it was by the sword okay so I wanted to talk a little bit more about that and you see that this is coming up in verse 14 and so this matches up in the other scriptures where it talks about how the beast receives this deadly wound and that would be in Isaiah 14 and Zechariah 14, which I've talked about before, and so I'll, I'll briefly go over that. Okay, so I'll just start from the beginning in Isaiah 14. It says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel, and set them in their own land, and the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. And so I've talked about before how this is basically a parallel to Revelation 14 and Zechariah 14 and in Zechariah 14 it uses the word cleave and this is basically the restoration of the temple and it it's basically represented by the Jews and the Gentiles so the Gentiles are represented by the strangers and then um, the Jews are represented by Israel and I'll talk about this some more, this imagery some more, but this is basically the restored DNA, the restoration of the temple. And so this is basically describing the, the rapture over here. It says, And the people shall, be, shall take them and bring them to their place, and the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were, and they shall rule over their oppressors. And in the Bible, it says that we get to rule and reign with Christ for a thousand years when the millennial reign begins. And that happens on the day of the Lord when the Lord returns. And so there's an overlap between the day of the Lord, the thousand year reign of Christ, and the three and a half years of tribulation. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall give thee rest from thy sorrow and from thy fear and from, from the hard bondage wherein thou wast made to serve, that thou shalt take up this proverb against the king of Babylon and say, How hath the oppressor ceased? The golden city ceased. And so the golden city would be Babylon. So this is when Babylon is destroyed and the king of Babylon is destroyed. And over here it says, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. And 
I explained the, the significance of the breaking the staff of the wicked in um, the third part of my video on the Ark of the Covenant, the Raiders of the Lost Ark. I noticed how Indiana Jones broke the, the staff, and I was a little curious about that at first when, when I saw him do that, but then I realized how this was a representation of the, the scriptures, and I explained that in the comments. But basically, I believe that the staff represents the, the two staves, the, of the Ark of the Covenant, which represents the DNA, and so the staff was broken at that point. And so when the, so this is another representation of the rapture, basically. And it says, he who smote the people, but it's also a representation of when the Antichrist is destroyed. Because it goes on to say, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. And so this comes up in verse 7, which is interesting. So it's Isaiah 14, 7. And again, this is a representation of the rapture. And I've explained before that the, the reason that the whole earth is at rest is because at this point, once the Mount of Olives splits, there's going to be two earths. And so this is talking about the earth that's at rest. This is the restoration of the temple. And then it says, Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, and I've explained before how this is a consummation of the covenant, which is described in Zechariah 14 as well, which is something else that I've been wanting to try to explain, but I'll have to do that in a separate video. No feller is come up against us. So this is basically when the rapture takes place. Okay, then it goes on to say, Hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming. Okay, so this is the coming of the Antichrist into Hades, into the, the pit. It stirreth up the dead for thee, even all the chief ones of the earth. It hath raised up from their thrones all the kings of the nations. And these are the Nephilim being stirred up in the pit. And they shall speak and say unto thee, Art thou also become weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? Thy pomp is brought down to the grave, and the noise of thy veals, the worm is spread under thee, and the worms cover thee. And then it goes on to say, How art thou, thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nation? So this is the same point that Lucifer is cast out of heaven. It happens at the same time. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God, I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the Most High, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee, and shall consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, and did shake the kingdoms? And I've explained before that this word narrowly means in wonder and amazement, and it's actually the same word in the Greek that's used in Revelation 13. Okay, you see that here in Revelation 13, 3, it says, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. And so this word wonder is the word thavmazo. See that over here? To wonder, marvel at, to be had in art admiration. Okay, so that's the word thavmazo, and then when you get to Isaiah 14, you see that it's the same word, thavmazusin, it's a form, it's a conjugated form of this same word right here. And thavma means a, a miracle, basically. 
can see that here, I wonder. Okay, and so it said over here, they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee or look at thee with wonder and amazement and consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, to tremble that did shake the kingdoms that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that opened not the house of the prisoners. And it's interesting that this is come that this comes up in verse 17 because this word wilderness is actually the word desolation. You see it right here, Edimon. Okay, and you see that in Matthew twenty four fifteen and Mark thirteen fourteen. I'll look at this one that since it's in verse fourteen and so when you look at the word desolation, you see that it's the word erimosis, which is the same word. It comes from the word erimo, which means to make desolate. And so the word desolation is this word erimosis, erimosis, making desolate, making desolation. And so it comes up. In all of these verses, Matthew 24, Mark 13, and Luke 21. And so it's interesting that um, these come up in verse 14, which is multiple 7, Luke 21 is multiple 7. And then Matthew 24, it's in verse 15. And in 14, it says, In this gospel, the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. So the end comes in verse 14. So that's another multiple of seven. And then it goes on to say, When ye therefore see the abomination of desolation. So it's explaining what happens at that time. But it begins with verse 14. Okay, so the word desolation is this word over here. Edimosis comes from the word edimoro, which means to make desolate. And then edimos means a desolate place sort of like Mount Zion is also desolate and so you see that word over here and I believe it's the same word that's going to be in Revelation 12 where the woman flees to the wilderness because there's always a true and a false so he carried me away in the spirit to the wilderness. So Mount Zion is also a wilderness. You see that in verse 17 and verse 14. It starts over here in verse 6. And then I'm not sure what this one is about exactly, but it's interesting the wilderness comes up in verse 17 there. But then in um, Galatians 4.27, which I've taught before, I believe, 27 is basically a parallel of 17. I believe they both represent the year 2017. And over here in Galatians is where it says, For it is written, Rejoice thou, barren that bearest not, break forth and cry thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath a husband. And this is basically the fulfillment of the Revelation 12 sign. And so this is the word wilderness. It's the same word that means desolation. And it's the word erimos. And this is what was coming up over here in verse 17 in, in reference to the Antichrist when he goes down into the pit. It says that made the world as a wilderness, as a desolation and destroy the cities thereof, they open not the house of the prisoners. But then it goes on to say, But thou art cast out of the grave like an abominable branch. So once the Antichrist is destroyed and he goes into the grave and into the pit, he's then cast out by God out of the grave, and the whole world is going to look at him in wonder and amazement, thinking that, he resurrected but it was actually God that cast him out of the pit and I'm running out of time once again so I'll have to continue in the next video thank you